It's Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. Coming to you from beautiful Palm Springs, California. As I make this video on this stunning evening, Dow futures are down 954 points, pointing to another disaster on Wall Street tomorrow. And as I sit here on this beautiful evening, going over a few articles, um, I think to myself, how are these markets going to ever recover? How is this economy ever going to recover? The service sector economy we have here in America, this economy where people buy things with money they don't have, how is this ever going to recover? Because when I look at the statistics, I look at the facts, uh, things are unraveling and we are going to a place we have never been before. U.S. jobless claims may reach 2.25 million, Goldman Sachs economist estimates. This is from Market Watch. David Choi, an economist for Goldman Sachs, says initial claims may reach this number by this weekend. He goes on to say that he estimates, estimates declines in casino gambling may have dropped 90 5%. Sports entertainment revenue may have dropped 80%. Hotel revenue may have dropped 75%. Public transportation revenue may have dropped 70%. And restaurant revenue, restaurant revenue may have dropped 65%. Do you think any of this is going to be good for the stock market this week? We haven't seen anything yet. This is going to get much worse. On top of that, at this uh, whole uh, infection we've got going on, people are getting really worried. Uh, the stress it's going to put on the healthcare system. And, and here we are, the greatest country in the world, the best economy in the world, the strongest economy, the strongest consumer, the strongest country in the entire world. And we're telling our health professionals to wear bandanas and scarves at work because we don't have any mask. We are ill prepared for this economic collapse that has now arrived here in America and it's about to get much worse. Daily Mail, three million Americans will file unemployment claims this coming week. California, New York, Connecticut, Illinois, and Louisiana are now on lockdown. 100% of non-essential workers, the non-essential workforce is being told not to go to work this week. I'm here at the uh, golf course here in Palm Springs. I won't mention the name, but I made a video here, made a few videos. I mean, one of my last videos was probably six, seven months ago here. And it was packed with people, people drinking their martinis, feeding their faces with food, not worrying about their 401ks, looking at the stock market, just reveling in how high it was going and surging and how big their 401ks were doing and their money markets and their, uh, and their IRAs. And life was good, my friend. I'm here today. I'm the only person here. The restaurants closed, the bars closed, the golf courses closed. I'm the only person sitting out here on the patio today. There's a few people walking around riding bikes um, in the background. But other than that, the whole the whole club is, is closed. And I bet those people today who were looking at those 401ks six or seven months ago who were just drunk on the excitement of the stock market, um, they're a little more worried today. In fact, they're very worried today. And I'm sure many of those people who have pensions are getting extremely worried. People who have equity in their homes getting very worried because the housing bubble is next. CNBC, Goldman Sachs sees unprecedented stop in economic activity with second quarter GDP contracting 24%. This is on CNBC, I'm not making this up. This isn't doom and gloom, this isn't panic. This is reality. This is the truth. This is what I've been talking about for a couple years now. This is what you've been preparing for a couple years for. It's here. And it's going to get a lot worse. And when you read an article like this, when Goldman Sachs is, is making these predictions, what do you think this is going to do to the markets this week? You know, I got an interesting call today, and I couldn't even believe it, from an old friend of mine. Uh, called me up. 
and uh, wanted a little advice from me. And I don't give financial advice, but it was a personal friend. Called me up, told me that his uh, girlfriend was in escrow on a $900,000 condo out here in the desert. And he was a little worried. And I told him he should be very worried and his girlfriend should be even more worried. He, he said, what should she do? And, and you know, it, it blows my mind that watching what has been going on for the last couple years, uh, we could go back the last 12 years, but what's been going on, let's just say for the last six months, the last year, who in the world would buy a condo out here in the desert for $900,000? Unbelievable what has taken place. Uh, the, price of, the prices of real estate and housing, these valuations are so blown out of reality People buying condos out here for $900,000 thinking it's a good deal. Um, look, the bottom line was you need to get out of this escrow because you have way much more to lose here than gain. If you can, if you can take five minutes out of your day and read what's going on, you know that condo is going to be going on sale in the not so distant future. We are going to see a massive real estate bubble pop yet again and we are going to see massive sales in the real estate market yet again and people up to recently are buying condos out here in the desert for nine hundred thousand dollars these are the masses these are the zombies and i hope this person can get out of this deal i hope that they haven't removed all their contingencies and i hope that uh, they can listen uh, to some real truth and reality here i hope they can get out of that without losing their deposit but think about that. People are still drinking the Kool-Aid in escrow with $900,000 condos. I had another friend call me uh, just telling me uh, just everything um, in his real estate office, it, homes in escrow are just falling out of escrow as fast as you can snap your fingers. Homes are falling out of escrow. Uh, so this is what's coming and this is just the writing on the wall and I'm just uh, telling you what's going on right here in the desert and it's coming uh, to your area also. We are going to see the biggest economic collapse the world has ever seen. The housing bubble is going to be much worse than the one we saw back in 2008. We are gonna see assets going on sale and that means real estate. They are going on a massive sale. This is gonna be one of the biggest real estate crashes we have ever seen. Look, connect the dots. Millions upon millions of people are losing their jobs right now. The stock market is seizing up. It is literally collapsing right before your very eyes. Industry is collapsing. A service sector uh, based economy where people are buying things with money they don't have, living off of credit cards. A country, a government living off of a credit card. Where do you think this is all going? Th this market valuation th that we're at right now is going to take a, a, a major haircut and that includes housing that includes the stock market and that includes assets across the board and that's why you need to be buying the two most undervalued assets the ones that have been just beaten up for years that's gold and that's silver because even dollars you can look at dollars as an asset they're going to come under extreme pressure at some point and they're not going to have the buying power that they once did because we are going to see massive hyperinflation coming to America with all of this money printing and with all uh, of this debt creation by the federal government. And the federal government is buying massive amounts of debt. And in order to do that, they've got to print a lot of money. They've got to put a lot of digits on, on the screens. And that is going to continue to devalue the U.S. dollar, which everybody looks at as the strongest uh, uh, currency in the world compared to all the other sick currencies. But it is going to have its day and it is going to get crushed because hyperinflation is not going to be avoided here in America. WolfStreet.com, Fed's balance sheet spikes. And I think the Fed is going to lose absolute control here. And you know, how, how much power will the Fed have when the dollar implodes, because all they can do is cut rates, go to negative and print money, money that is not gonna buy very much very soon. A record 
the Fed balance sheet right now is at a record $4.67 trillion. So it's exceeding $4.5 trillion. That's up by $508 billion since February 26. So less than a month, they've already put $508 billion on the balance sheet. The Fed is offering one month and three month repos of $500 billion each twice a week, plus overnight repos of up to $500 billion, plus two week repos. The Fed is flooding the system with cash. Look, this didn't work in Zimbabwe. If it did, Zimbabwe would have the biggest economy in the world, and it's not going to work this time around either. And this should scare every one of you because how safe is your bank if the Fed is having to pump in $500 billion uh, into the repo markets uh, uh, you know, every other night? Because there is a liquidity crisis, there is a cash crisis in the banking system here in America. And who knows how much money is going into foreign banks that we're pumping into also, such as Deutsche Bank. Be very, very careful with your cash in your savings account, in your checking account. I would say, and this is just me, I'm not giving anybody financial advice, but I would be very careful in the amount of cash money I have in a bank. People are writing me on a daily basis that they are putting limits on withdrawals. Those limits could be increased or decreased. Um, if they're allowing you to take uh, 10,000 uh, those limits could be decreased to 5,000, to 4,000, to 1,000, to 200. The banks could close. They may make you just go to an ATM, allow you to take 500, then it's 200, then it's $20. Look, the more you are, you are less dependent on these banks, the safer you're going to be. The less money you have in these banks, the safer you're going to be. And you know, uh, for the people who don't like banks like myself, we give them all the power by putting our money in those banks by lending our money to those banks you know we should take that power away by taking the money away from these banks now the, so now the federal government is going to be sending the american people is it going to be a thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars i've heard maybe it's going to be two thousand dollars is it coming in four weeks eight weeks now i'm hearing it's going to come in 12 weeks we have over seven million people here in america that are 90 days plus delinquent on their auto payments. The typical American is broke. The typical American is drowning in debt. And the typical American may have to wait 12 weeks for a check of one or $2,000. How is that going to help the problem that this country faces, the massive debt, the massive household debt, the individual debt, uh, the consumer debt, the corporate debt, the state debt, uh, it's, there's just debt everywhere. And we have a federal government that's going to try and bail out the people. It's going to try and bail out uh, industries, small business, big business. The U.S. government is bankrupt. It's over $23 trillion in debt, not including unfunded liabilities like Medicare, Medicaid, unfunded pensions. Where is this money all going to come from? And is $1,000 or $2,000 going to help somebody two months from now who's already drowning in debt, who's already 90 plus days delinquent on their auto payment? The Fed is about to begin buying everything, including corporate debt, and the taxpayer is going to be liable for this. This is exactly what Japan did. We're now turning into Japan. These markets are broken. And we're watching at this point silver and gold decoupling from the paper market, which is very interesting. Still, the two most undervalued assets on the entire planet are silver and gold. I looked at uh, SD Bullion today, Silver Eagles 2020, uh, the new uh, Silver Eagle 2020 is priced at $23.78, and they're not even available, and you must buy a $300 minimum order. So these are pre-sale, $23.78. So we are watching a decoupling now where gold and silver, uh, the gold and silver market isn't believing the paper market. And this is very dangerous for the paper market. So no doubt we are seeing drastic changes take place here in America as the government is going to be using your money to buy stocks. 
We're losing fair competition, individuality, and personal accountability here in America. People are losing their liberty and their financial futures right now. We are so close to a global banking meltdown, and yet people still have money in the bank. They're still buying $900,000 condos here in the desert. Unbelievable how so many are still asleep, but so many are waking up. But it may be too late for so many who didn't see the warning signs a year ago or two years ago or even a couple months ago. Physical gold and silver will break free from the paper market in a spectacular fashion. Right now, the physical market is decoupling from the paper market. Just look at the price that you're seeing right now for gold, for silver. Just told you 2378 for a brand new 2020 Silver Eagle at SD Bullion. Uh, just looking at some of the other online dealers, they're way up and, and some of them are even charging more. You know, to that person last week who told me that, well, silver and gold are down, my 401k is down, it's all down, um, so it, it doesn't matter. Your 401k is backed by paper. It's called the US dollar. You're gonna get paid in US dollars. Another piece of paper that is going to be devalued. And no, gold and silver are not going down. The price of paper gold and silver is going down, but the real physical price of gold and silver is not going down. In fact, it's doing the opposite. The silver and gold market is decoupling from the paper market, and that is very scary for these markets because when people say, hey, I don't care about the price of paper, gold or silver, uh, I care about the physical price. And now that physical or that paper market can no longer influence the physical market. And that is one of their worst nightmares is when they cannot suppress gold and silver any longer. They, they can no longer flood uh, the, the, these markets in the middle of the night with uh, paper, three million ounces of gold or three million ounces of paper silver um, and all these fake numbers and all this fake gold and suppress the price of the physical. The physical gold and silver markets are waking up and people are waking up knowing that a piece of paper is worthless. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. If you don't have a physical, hard, tangible asset in your hand, you are risking your financial future. Kitco. Physical gold squeezed further. Royal Canadian Mint shuts down for two weeks. They're out of gold. As you know, the U.S. Mint is out of silver. They, uh, they are not producing silver eagles as of right now. I think there's about a four-week wait. So again, we have an asset here that the stock market is telling us is going down in value, but everybody's buying it. You can't get it. And in the physical market, the prices are going up. It'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, in these markets this week. Um, but what I see happening is everything is gonna be blamed on this infection. And this infection will be the scapegoat for the banks, uh, for the central banks, uh, for th these large uh, financial institutions. They are going to use this infection as the scapegoat, that this is what brought down the economy when this is the farthest thing from the truth. We knew there were problems uh, last summer, September, when the repo crisis began, where the Fed had to come in and start injecting cash into the repo market because there was a liquidity crisis in the banking system. That started last summer. Look, this thing never got fixed from 2008, okay? We put a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. And we printed a lot of money. Again, corporate buybacks, low rates, uh, lots of fake optimism, lots of fake data. This whole thing was fake. But the scapegoat is gonna be this infection now. So while the 1% ran these markets all the way up, the 99% will pay the price. And isn't this interesting? 1,300 CEOs, had left their positions since 2019, but of course they didn't know anything that, that was coming, right? January of 2020, 219 CEOs have already stepped down just in January, yet they didn't know anything was coming. Just like those uh, politicians who sold out of the market as soon as they heard about this infection, they didn't have any insider knowledge, right? So 
1,300 CEOs stepped down in 2019, 1,300 have stepped down uh, just this January. Why did they do that? Because they knew that this economy was coming to an end and they knew that these markets were ready to crash. Bridgewater Associates, a prominent hedge fund manager there says the economy will shrink over the next three months at an annual rate of 30%. The big concern right now is the supply chain issue that we have. Um, also, we have a major liquidity crisis forming and a major credit crisis forming. This is why all these um, big corporations are drawing down because they know a credit crisis is coming. They're, they're taking and grabbing the cash right now because they know the banks are about to tighten up. What are you going to do if your bank is closed? and your ATM only lets you withdraw $50 a day. Get your money out of the banks tomorrow. That's my advice, and I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not giving you financial advice, but I am telling you, I think it's a very good idea at this point to leave the very bare minimum in your bank accounts, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the big corporations know they're drawing down. They're pulling the money off the table right now because they know that these banks aren't going to be lending. They know that it's going to be very, very hard to get cash. If these banks close, if there's a bank holiday, if there's bank runs, uh, the bank doors close. And you will be at the ATM and you will hope that you can get $200 out of that ATM. What happens when the ATM what happens when they pull the plug and there's no more ATM and you're just frozen out? You know, what happened in Cyprus? Uh, what happened in Lebanon? What's happened all over the world where they just shut the doors, shut the ATMs off, and you wait. And hopefully in 30 days, they let, they let you go back to the ATM and you can pull $50 a day out. Look, this is no joke. This is really happening right here in America. We have serious, serious problems coming and nobody has an answer. Uh, unfortunately, we don't make anything here. Unfortunately, we have massive debt. Uh, unfortunately, the consumer, the corporations, the households, and the government is broke. What is gonna get us out of this mess? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but I, what I do know is when a country doesn't make anything, when you don't manufacture anything other than debt, you're gonna have big trouble. And this may hit a lot harder than 1929 did. It may last a lot longer, and it may be a lot more brutal than what our grandparents went through. We have a country addicted to pharmaceuticals, a country that is obese, that is dumbed down, that is slow, uh, that can't take their eyes uh, off of their phones, uh, adults playing video games, a country that's gotten very, very soft. We're in a real bad place here, ladies and gentlemen. And again, this is reality. This isn't to panic you or scare you. You should already be scared with what you're watching take place. Because when this spills over socially, when those store shelves go empty, um, we're gonna see some crazy things here. And isn't it interesting, all the people at the gun stores in line now, you know, the people that told you you shouldn't own things like that, the, that's dangerous, um, you know, those are the people now at the gun store because they're getting scared. The same people that told you you shouldn't, you shouldn't own a gun. Guns are bad, but now they're getting nervous. So they're at the gun stores. People told you none of this could ever happen, that it's happening. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what happens this week. We'll see how much stimulus they're going to pour out. Is it $2 trillion? Uh, I think Steve uh, Mnuchin said $4 trillion. $4 trillion in stimulus now. Bailouts everywhere. Money printing everywhere. Where's it all coming from? Who's going to pay it back? We are at a place we've never been and a place that we're never going to forget. Make sure that um, you're topping off all preparations. Make sure you, you are saying your prayers to God because we need a miracle, ladies and gentlemen.
we need a miracle. And I'm a, I've been saying my prayers nightly for this country, for this president, for the people of America, and for the people who didn't prepare for this disaster that's knocking at the door now, because their life is gonna be a living hell because they didn't prepare. If you're standing in line now for food and water or uh, a firearm, you are really late to the party. But I'm praying for everybody out there and I'm praying for a miracle. God bless all of you. Uh, stay safe this week. Continue to do what you're doing. God bless you.